<laughs> Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome back to my channel to me, because I'm the one who left it hanging for the last two weeks. So where we left off was my last video in which I kind of reminded everyone about the last 24 hours of my new art book Kickstarter, which I am super happy to announce was a complete success. And I want to thank you guys so much once again for supporting the project and for making it happen and for actually making the last stretch goal happen as well which you know got real tight there near the end in fact it was probably the most um suspenseful kickstarter that i have ever backed or been part of because the stretch goal that is the extra 16 pages that will be added to the book was hit literally like 10 8 minutes before the very end of the kickstarter so it was a wild roller coaster ride in terms of emotion for me and that's why afterwards i was so completely exhausted and felt like um a corpse and i needed to take some time off which i did and i'm back now so as you can see this video is of this gouache study that i did a little bit ago I, it was like a maybe a couple of months ago. I have posted the image on my Instagram account a while back and I've been meaning to make a video out of it. And I kind of ended up forgetting about it until now. So I figured uh, instead of taking another week off, which I considered, I will just make this one into the video and kind of just let you guys know what I'm up to. And I mean, mostly I wanted to let you guys know about the Kickstarter ended up you know the the stretch goal and all that um which happened which is fantastic so super excited about the fact that the book is in fact 16 pages longer than it was initially going to be and that now that the kickstarter is over it's up for pre-orders on the 3d total website a link to which i will leave in my description so if you still wanted to check out my art book or potentially pre-order it you can check it out in the link uh, in my description so yeah um it was crazy. What have I been up to for the past couple of weeks? Nothing exciting. I just uh, reinstalled League of Legends, unfortunately, and was a little bit ad addicted to that, which, you know, I, now I'm thinking like maybe I should just uninstall it again, which is something I'm probably going to do if I want to get back into a regular pace with my work and things. But yeah, currently I am working on the postcard designs for the Kickstarter. As some of you may know, there was a stretch goal that was hit earlier on that has two postcards as just free gifts that will be added to the Kickstarter um, packages or whatever once the book will be mailed out. And I wanted to make some new designs for that instead of recycling the stuff that I already have. And I created a couple of polls on Instagram to uh, just get you guys to help me like pick the general trajectory of those po postcards i knew that i wanted to make them of my characters obviously but i had a couple of options in terms of which characters and i am going to follow the polls so the first set of postcard designs to choose from i did was of noel and heijin and i did like three different fashion outfit options for them and i did pick one of them according to the poll the most popular one and i'm going to be cleaning that up hopefully today maybe next week and i'm definitely gonna make a video about that as well and then i'll make one more postcard design with sweet and zero and that will more or less conclude my uh art book remnant tasks uh in the meantime i've actually did the i managed to finish the back of the book design which i completely forgot about like the back cover of the book <laughs> and um so i did that and i also did a, something cool for the spine but yeah this must be like riveting to listen to so i'm just gonna move on and talk about this study so i'm actually so it's been a little while since i've done any more gouache studies because i was so busy wrapped up with the book and kickstarter and some other freelance work which i am so happy to announce that i did manage to finish all of that thank god it's driving me crazy i had like a bunch of leftover tasks for various freelance things and a couple of commissions that were like long overdue but i don't even take commissions anymore but those are they were pretty long overdue <laughs> anyways so those are done now and like i mentioned i'm just wrapping up those postcards and those are the last of my tasks before i fully jump into my comic 
development slash, um, I guess, visual development and writing and all that. And in the meantime, like I mentioned, it's been a little while since I've done these gouache studies and I'm actually really looking forward to doing some more of those because I just can't help myself and I just want to do new things all the time, which I'm sure does not help with my project timelines, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, this one I actually quite enjoyed in particular because I do really like how it turned out, even though, you know, there are some weak areas and I could have definitely done some things better, but I wanted to show you guys this one because I approached it a little bit differently from my previous gouache designs. Uh, sorry, designs, um, gouache studies. Uh, so with this one, I wanted to do a very diluted underwash or under, is that what it's called? A wash, first wash, I don't know, whatever. Um, first layer before getting into the more opaque paint. And I think that actually turned out quite well because it really helped to it's really difficult to go into these studies using very opaque colors right off the bat because i don't know it's just it's kind of scary doing using super thick paint on essentially just a white um canvas slash paper in this case so of course as usual i started with an under sketch in my red color race pencil which i really like for these um, I would probably use a different color of pencil if the color scheme of the rest of the piece was different, but red worked super well with this one, as you can see, because it has a bunch of red in it already. And yeah, this photo I actually found on Pinterest. I do have a folder in my Pinterest where I just gathered a bunch of interesting images that I am planning to use for further gouache studies at some point, hopefully soon. And typically how I tend to pick the images is they do usually feature a person, like um, a photo of a person. Um, I like to use photos because I want to leave the stylization up to me. Maybe it would be helpful to do some master point uh, studies of paintings, but for now I just want to do studies of photos so that I can just allow myself to learn and figure out how to simplify on my own. On my own terms essentially and this photo uh, and most of the other ones that i pick into my reference folder are everything like all they have in common is usually interesting lighting and interesting color combos so those are the things that i gravitate towards and i think color is kind of uh it's something that i could use a lot of improvement in i'm not super comfortable with color especially when it comes to fully painted images that have some sort of background or like where the character is nested within the environment and the lighting affects the character like the lighting comes from the environment and you know what i mean like when the character is integrated into the environment uh that they're that surrounds them that's something that i almost never draw it, it's kind of funny i was looking through my um instagram feed the other day and yeah it's mostly just characters either on a white background or even if i do have a background element it seldom actually affects the lighting or the color scheme so i that's something i really want to improve on and i want to bring a lot more of that into my work going forward because especially since i'm planning to start on my comic soon as soon as possible obviously when it comes to a comic you do have a lot of settings and you know backgrounds a big part of it and yeah that, that's one of the reasons why i decided to kind of do some of these studies in the first place and yeah so for this one as i mentioned i decided to try putting a diluted wash down before i went in with some of the thicker paint and more opaque paint and I actually think that this technique works super well to um, create like an atmosphere. So I'm talking about this like way too late. Like we passed that part in the video a while. I'm sorry, this is a little bit of haphazard because I had a busy week and I did not put enough time into this video and I apologize for that. But anyways, moving on. So at the beginning, I put some of the darks down. Um, surrounding the girl and then in the very center i put a very light wash of a warm orangey yellow tone because one of the things i really loved about this photo 
was just the glowing effect of her skin and her face and just this little like warm concentrated very bright area ar around her face and where she's holding the apple and then it kind of being dark all around so i'm pretty sure this photograph was actually edited maybe even filtered to make it look more like a painting because it actually does kind of look like a painting to me but that was one of the very attractive qualities that the photo had and i do think that putting down um just a general wash like an undertone of the yellow and warm tones right around where her face is uh, really helped to at least capture that effect to some degree in the end and I'm pr pretty quite happy with how that turned out because it was experimental as all of these have been and you know I will also say that what you can see to the side here on the same page is another study I did of obviously another photo uh, that I consider like not a very successful one because the lighting was so beautiful in the photo and I don't think I, I just didn't really capture it I couldn't really do it justice in the study um, so uh, you know I didn't bother making a video out of that or anything and every study is still a very good learning experience I think so I'm glad I did it but I think one of the issues with that study was that the figure was just so small and there were a lot of similar colors and a lot of subtleties that I just couldn't really capture at that size but also I um I don't know I could have I, I should have probably done things in a different order but that's not the painting we're talking about here so with this one there's a couple of things that I had to think about a little bit before deciding how I was going to approach it and specifically I'm talking about um the pattern on the cloth that the girl is lying on so it's got a floral pattern on it and there's a lot of little elements going on and it's quite detailed so i was thinking i'm not sure how i should do this without like losing the stylized look of it and like getting into super detailed like mindless rep replication type of situation which is always like a trap for me personally unless i am specifically focused on wanting to retain a stylized approach um i can fall into the uh the mindless like i don't know just copying what i see mode which i would probably advise against because it's kind of easy to do that it maybe depends on where you're at in your studies but i, I do think that it requires a lot more brain power to actively try and stylize things rather than just copy exactly what you see one to one so for instance if you look at the apples um i really made them a lot more angular than they actually are in the photo and that was for the purpose of just finding some sort of interesting stylized approach which i think it turned out okay um you know it doesn't look as good as it could have definitely but overall pretty happy especially with that one apple <laughs> the super red one that's um you know up in the corner on the right hand side over there i was pretty happy with that but yeah because i was pretty new to gouache i was still using a lot of experimental things and for instance for the dress i kind of approached it in the same way that i would have approached it if i was using ink so i used very diluted paint and just kind of created I almost use it like watercolor specifically for her dress and which is fine because i i think it was easier to create the pattern or to kind of try to duplicate the pattern or recreate the pattern on her dress using a bit of a transparent uh consistency with the paint rather than just going in with the opaque because it was just like it would have taken me much longer if i decided to use opaque paint on that which is fine I think looking back, I could have probably elaborated more on the folds and the wrinkles in her dress because I did kind of fall into the trap of just looking at what I'm seeing and trying to replicate it, even though a lot of the times I forget that sometimes when you see something and you try to replicate it one-to-one, -one, it just really doesn't look good because in a photo, it's realistic everywhere and so it reads right because you know that is what it is in reality, but when it comes to a painting, sometimes the folds just end up looking weird and bad and unnatural 
um, if you approach it that way. So I think I should have just made some stuff up just to sell it a little more and have better shapes in the folds. But yeah, overall, that's pretty much all I can say about this piece. And I did have a lot of fun doing it. And I'm hoping to get back into more gouache studies as I have more time. But overall, I've mentioned what I'm up to right now. And hopefully I will be back on my regular YouTube schedule very soon, starting next week. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. And like I mentioned, my art book is now ready for pre-orders and you can find that in my link in the description. Bye!